Ah, the age-old debate, double versus single opt-in forms. Well, today you're actually going to learn how to, inside of ConvertKit, give brand new subscribers multiple opportunities to con confirm their email address. I'm Jason from NurtureKit, NurtureKit.co, and as I always say, when you treat your list like humans, amazing transformations happen. If you are in this constant debate with yourself, whether or not to use single or double opt-in on your forms, today you're actually going to learn the method at which I use for myself as well as my clients that squashes that debate. You're going to give brand new subscribers to your list the opportunity, multiple opportunities to confirm themselves as soon as they jump on board. I analyzed 115 double opt-in forms over the course of six months, varying different forms, webinars versus lead magnets versus one-off landing pages, but they were all double opt-in. And over that time period, 34% of those that opted in to the form itself remained unconfirmed. Now that's one third of the subscribers that come onto your list that you worked hard for that on average didn't either click the, the link in the email or didn't see the email. That incentive email that goes out, it goes out once and then you're stuck. That, that subscriber is stuck. If they miss that opportunity, it's lost. Well, with this method, you stand to decrease that number from 34% to less than 10% in some cases. Even in some cases, I've seen it less than 2%. So I call it my enhanced double opt-in method, and we're gonna walk through that today. Look, the goal is ultimately to get subscribers onto your list, but to get real confirmed subscribers onto your list so that they're engaged with you, that you can sell to, that you can get replies to. We wanna keep our list healthy. If our emails don't land in our inbox because we're sending so many emails to unconfirmed email addresses that, well, nobody sees our offers. We also want to create the least amount of friction for brand new subscribers, right? I mean, you've seen the landing pages. I do them all the time where you opt in somebody and then there's a thank you page that says, go check your inbox. Here's the subject line. If you don't see it, check your junk folder. And there's these GIFs and movies of how to move things around. I mean, it's nobody does that. So this is a way in which combats that. It creates little to no friction for the, the new subscriber on your list, keeps your list healthy, and just allows you to then go ahead and be more human to your list. Now, there's two caveats to this. One, ConvertKit has a pro plan, creator pro plan that has this engagement score and you can use that score in this method and gives you more options. But I'm going to assume that you don't have this because that is a higher tier plan. But I'm gonna highlight in this where if you do, here's a thing that you can do to further enhance this double opt-in method. The second thing is, is you have to understand what a cold subscriber is and how ConvertKit looks at cold subscribers. So let's dive into their documentation. ConvertKit defines a cold subscriber as someone who has been active for more than 90 days that hasn't opened or clicked on an email in the last 90 days. We're talking new subscribers here. Right? So these people haven't been on this list for that, on your list for that long. So if it's fewer than 90 days, it's anyone who hasn't opened or clicked on an email in the last 30. So that's going to be our magic number here, 30 days. First, we're going to essentially apply a tag to every subscriber that comes in. Now we're going to do that so that we can kick off that 30 day timer, if you will. Now, if you subscribe to the philosophy of the driver tags, no pun intended there, but they are tags that allow you to control subscribers moving through your automation. This is going to come very easy because you now have the infrastructure already built in. But if you don't, basically what you wanna do is anytime somebody subscribes to a form or comes onto your list through any other means, you want to apply a tag to it. So I'm just going to apply the nurture kit tag to it. The next step is, is we're going to make sure that our form is single opt-in. So by single opt-in, we go up to settings 
and we look at the incentive, right? So there's two things here. One, if we just creating a brand new form, make sure this box is not checked, right? Let's go ahead and send the incentive, the download inside of a sequence that delivers the lead magnet. This is something that I encourage everyone to do because it gives you multiple opportunities to get that download in front of them. However, if you already have this form set up as a double opt-in, you probably have this and the deliverable is in this email. Now, if that, if that email exists, you can leave it there, but make sure that the auto-confirmed new subscribers is checked. Most likely it's off. And if it is checked, you're going to get this warning why you should not auto confirm subscribers. This whole visual automation that we're going to dive into is simple and it's going to basically combat all of those reasons. Okay. So once you get that, you click save, and then we're going to go into the visual automation. Now the visual automation is sent off based off of that driver tag. And that driver tag is nurture kit in this case. First thing we're going to do is set onboarding status to pending. This is a custom field. So what you're going to do is in the action, set custom field. So I've done that already, right? And so then the next thing is, is because this is impending, this actually allows us a few things. It allows us to create a segment that we know how many people have come into our world, into our list in the last 30 days, because once 30 days passes, that field gets changed. So we're going to trigger off a delay for 30 days. And then finally, what we're going to do here is leverage the cold subscriber sequence that is by default through an advanced filter. And the way you do that is, is you add a condition and you click on advanced filters. Now, advanced filters is very much the same search mechanism in which to build out segments or broadcasts or anything else. And you can actually select cold subscribers. And that's what you're going to do. Select cold subscribers, add condition. This is actually going to say to us now, because of the way that the app works, I've tested this. If nobody opens or clicks on an email in 30 days, well, they're considered cold. This will then allow you to then say, what do we do with them now? The part where I mentioned about the creator plan, the pro plan, you can actually go ahead and segment them based on engagement score. Um, so there'll be another option under here and it'll say engagement score. And that's a rating of one to five. And you can, depending on how often you email, if you all, all email daily and they only opened one email, you might consider them not engaged. So that's just another way in which you could further enhance this. For the sake of this, they fall into the cold subscriber. If they are engaged, they've clicked on email, they've opened emails, then we're just going to set that onboarding status to confirm and well on their way. If they do fall into the cold segment, then we're going to set the onboarding status to unconfirmed. There's two things that you can do here. One is you can set a re-engagement campaign if you'd like to try to re-engage somebody. And you would do this if your industry is based around subscribers that are very corporate or maybe in the medical space or use a client that opens are not a very, very indicative way of uh, engagement. Right? It's also if you send minimal number of emails, if you only send one or two emails or maybe even four emails a month, that doesn't give a lot of opportunity for somebody to engage with you. So um, you might want to send off a re-engagement campaign. In this case, we're just going to say, look, unsubscribe. You could just do an action and unsubscribe. The reason why we're actually setting the unconfirmed is so that if somebody does resubscribe later on, we can check. We know that their status, they didn't engage us the first time. We could address that in some other way. At this point, you've got an engaged list after they've been on it for a month, right? For 30 days, you are not sending emails to people that aren't engaged, that might have typed in their email address wrong. It's clean at this point. You've minimized the friction for somebody to find your brand new emails that they're getting to you, right? And so you're not necessarily combating that one 
email that is like, hey, I need to get somebody to see this email. How do I get this? And you don't bombard them all over the place to check their emails. If this was helpful. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell icon uh, so that you get notified when a new video drops. And until next time, if you treat your email list like humans, amazing transformations will happen.